Welcome back Vipers, I'm Paulo and today we have another mod review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Faro Box 65 TC which is made by a company called Fumitech. This mod was sent to me uh, free of charge for the purpose of this review for you guys, okay? It's made out of a zinc alloy and stainless steel and I got the lighter color. You can get this in a darker stainless steel uh, which I'll leave the link on the bottom to the website where you guys can pick one up if you choose to get one. I don't know. But it's been working really great. It's a really nice little mod. Really stealthy, nice and small. One thing I didn't show on the close-up, the size comparison to it. Let me see if I can show you guys a size comparison. Okay. It's pretty good. The K-Box Mini. Also stainless steel, almost the same size. This one's a little bit thinner, but in height, it's about the same thing. Okay, so just to give you guys an idea of the size comparison to it, let me take a hit off of it. With this RDA on top of it, the, the Mutation X version 4S, it's awesome. Um, I'm rocking it at 65 watts, which is the maximum. This this device goes from 3 watts all the way up to 65 watts. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's 3.2 volts all the way up to 10 volts. But I'll show you that in a close-up. And you can work in temperature control or in power mode. Power mode is stainless steel and cantal and nichrome. Nichrome, not Ni200, all right? Nichrome. And in, stain in a temperature control mode, you can use it in, with uh, Ni200 or titanium wire. It does not do stainless steel in temperature control mode, guys, all right? So that's one of the downfalls I have for it. But yeah, let's not waste much more time. Let's get down in person. Let's check it out. Then we'll come back up. I'll give you my final opinion and take some hits off of this for you guys, okay? See you guys in a minute. Okay, guys, so here we are with the Ferro Box 65TC temperature control box mod by Fumitech. Here's what it comes with. And inside the box, we get your temperature control mod. Okay, it's uh, fully made out of stainless steel and zinc alloy. It holds one 18650 battery that we sold separately. It does not come with the mod. And uh, I would use hydrogen batteries, okay, guys? Uh, on this one, I've been using Samsung 25Rs or the Sony VTC4s. It can read um, from 3.2 volts all the way up to 10 volts on this one, guys. And it does three to 65 watts, which is pretty cool. Uh, what else can I tell you about this? It's 22 millimeter, let me take it out. It's 22 millimeter in diameter by 35 millimeters by 90.6 millimeters in height. Okay. Here's your minus, your plus, your fire button on and off. You have an extra button here to turn it on and off, which is really cool. You have a magnetic, uh, magnetic door cover. Here's your battery tray. It indicates your positive and negative. You can see it right there. Here's your screws if you want to get to your chip. Oh, by the way, this chip is made by them. It's called the FM65GT. So it's, it's made by Fumitech. Your negative contact, which is gold-plated, is spring-loaded. Okay. Your positive uh, is fixed. You have magnets on the inside, top and the bottom. Really strong magnets. You have a magnet here and here. Okay. Here you can read Ferrobox 65TC. USB charging ported at the bottom. I wish it was on the side, but it's at the bottom. Here you have a logo of Fumitech. Vent holes for your battery on each side and in the middle. A stainless steel um, ring with, if I'm not mistaken, that is um, copper or brass plated uh, contact pin. 
I would go more with brass. It's too it's too bright to be copper. So I'd go with brass. Yeah, but it's stainless steel threading. You can also take this part off so you can put a strap around here if you want to put it around your neck, which I don't think anyone's going to do that, but you can. Then you just tighten it up here and you put your RDA or tank on top like so. And that's how it'll look like that. Okay. It's a nice looking mod. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a really nice looking mod. So let's stick a battery in here. So you have your AC-DC button here. <laughs> it's your power supply button. It's your firing button. You have your plus, nice clicky buttons, and minus, and your on and off. Everything is indicated on it, which I think is really cool. Really nice big screen, and it's bright also during the day. The quality on it is, is excellent, okay? The quality, I can't say anything about it. It's really nice, really strong magnets. They work great. Um, I'm going to put the Sony, the Samsung 25R battery inside of it, so you're negative it at the bottom. Put it through the bottom first because that's where it has a spring on it. They just fit in the top. And it's on. I think this only fits one way. Yeah, because if you try it the other way, it's not going to work. So it only fits one way. Like so. Uh, let me show you guys. To turn it on, just... Um, Press the, the on button for about three seconds, I guess. Yeah, it's about three seconds. And here you have your menu screen. So here you're gonna have your battery level. Here it's gonna tell you if you're in watts or in a temperature control. Up here, it's gonna give you your ohms on your resistance. And over here, it's gonna give you your volts that you're working at, depending on the coil you have and the watts you're set to. Um, yeah, first thing I'm going to show you guys, you can switch the screen around, which is really nice. You just press the plus and minus button, and it switches it around, you see. Um, if you press your on button and your down button, it'll lock in. So I really like this, you guys know that. So when I set in uh, the watts that I want, if I touch these by mistake, it's not going to do anything because they're locked in, which I really like that. So you just press your minus and uh, on button again to unlock. Okay. And to switch between the screens, just press this quick. You're in Fahrenheit, right? So when you're in temperature control, just press it once. You go to Celsius. Press it again, and you're in watts. Then all you do is put plus and minus. Three watts to 65 watts, guys. But this is really fast, so I might as well show you. Go three watts. Let's call it up to 65. Really fast. Okay, so let's say you want to go to temperature. Temperature, just press it once. You're in Fahrenheit. If you press it again, you go to Celsius. Press it again, go to watts. So let's go to Fahrenheit. If you want to change it to, here it says nickel, right? You want to go to titanium, press it three times fast. One, two, three. You're in titanium. Okay, in Fahrenheit. If you want to go to Celsius, press it once. And you're in Celsius and titanium. Then you'll go to watts. And go back. Really simple. One, two, three. You're all the way in nickel again. Okay, so that's the menu screen. That's it. It's really simple to work with. You press your fire button. Of course, it's going to say no atomizer because there's nothing there. Um, I can't put one in if you guys want. But I'm going to be working in watts. So we're in watts. And you just put it on. Here it gives you the resistance of your coil. It's 0.35, okay, 0.34 if I'm not mistaken, right there. And at 65 watts, I'll be vaping at 4.7 volts. You press it, and it's vaping. It has a 10 second cutoff. This material is a special anti-scratch treatment, which is really nice, okay? Okay, so protections. We have a 10 second uh, protection cutoff. We have a low voltage protection. We have short circuit prote protection. Uh, discharge protection, overheating protection, chip collision, battery reverse polarity, if you put the battery in backwards, it's not going to work either, and a default coil. So if there's something wrong with the coil, it won't work either. Okay, so it has a lot of protections on it. You can work with cantle wire, titanium, nickel, and stainless steel. Stainless steel and uh, cantle, you can only use it in watts mode. 
titanium and nickel is what you can use in temperature control, but we're going to get into that in a second. If you're using temperature control, titanium wire, nickel wire, it'll read all the way down to 0.07 ohms, all the way up to, to 1 ohm. If you're in watts mode, or saying cantle wire, stainless steel wire, it will read from 0.15 ohms all the way up to 3 ohms. Okay, I already told you the voltage, it goes from 3.2 volts all the way up to 10 volts, which is a lot. And uh, the ohm meter, it's called the Ultra GXO. It has an accuracy of 1 to 1,000. And the precision detection technology developed by Funitech, it allows a self-detection of the core resistance at least 200 times per second. It's not bad. Okay, so yeah, that's it. So let's check what else we got in the box. You get your user manual. That's in English. Little designs here. It tells you how the, the functions work, the buttons, what you have to press, what you don't have to press, to lock in your mod, um, to turn it on, turn it off, what you have to do, and everything is explained in here. So yeah. Then here, we have our USB cable for charging. It's a long cable. Just to show you guys what happens when you put it charging. Doo -doo 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 -doo. It's a pretty long cable, guys. So, put it here at the bottom. Uh, this way, I guess. There you go, it's hooked in. Let me hook it up to my computer. And what do we get on the screen? Get you charging. So it does have bypass, you see? Let me take a hit off of this. So that's your cable. And your warranty card. These are the Kanger Tech coils. Okay, I just put this in here. Kanger Tech nickel coil. I'll show you guys the nickel coil. Uh, let's see if you guys can see this. That's your Kanger coil, and it's a nickel coil. And it's a brand new coil, nickel, right there, see that right there, and yeah, it's a 0.15 ohm coil if I'm not mistaken, and we're going to put on top of the mod, okay, so let's put on top of the mod, oh well, okay guys, so what we're going to do is switch it to nickel wire, press it once, and right there you have nickel wire and I and I'm only at 200 degrees Fahrenheit okay? 400 degrees Fahrenheit like we're used to on the screen saying that it cuts off it says um, no liquid or whatever on the coil right it's counting but it's not actually firing And you can see it right here on the watts up here, because uh, when you're around Fahrenheit, the watts are going to be on top, so when you fire it, it doesn't read anything. So over time, because that's a 10 seconds, but as you guys can see with the Kanger Tech coil, it works great. It doesn't say it here, but it's not firing. and this. Yeah, it's not hot at all. See, I put my fingers on it, so if it was burning, I would be pretty stupid showing it to you guys and put my fingers here. But yeah, it works. 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's a completely brand new coil and it's dry, so. Could I thought, I'm gonna do this test. If it burns a coil, the hell with it. The machine's not good and it'll burn the coil, just throw it out, and it was my last coil, but it's working great, guys, it works. Okay, so temperature control does work. Keep doing it. It doesn't fire. And you guys can see up here on the watts. There's no watts on it. It's zero point whatever, which is not even one watt. So, yeah, it's working. And it's not hot. Nice. 
Okay, so you have an elegant looking mod here with temperature control. Too bad it doesn't do stainless steel though, but then again, you can also use stainless steel in uh, Watts mode, guys, no problem at all. Just don't forget when you make your coils to, to open up your coil, okay? Don't, don't leave it together like you usually do with your Cantal. Uh, space your coil on, on uh, stainless steel so you don't get any hot spots. That's what I suggest anyway. So yeah, let's go back up to FaceTime and on it and I'll give you my final. Okay guys, so that was our close in person with the Ferro Box 65TC box mod. Um, what do I have to say about it? Let's go with the cons first. Uh, probably one of the first cons that I'm going to give it is that um, it costs 45 pounds. The link that I'm going to leave on the bottom is from England and their actual website. But I'll leave you guys an English website since I'm in Europe. And it's 45 pounds, which should come around to, I would say, about $65, $70. I think. So price point on it, um, compared to other mods in the market right now, it's a bit pricey, okay? It is a bit pricey. But also we have to think about the quality on it. This reminds me of some electronic, I don't know, some, some device, it reminds me of it. I don't know why. You know, you guys remember the Nokia's, um, there was a Nokia that was made out of titanium. That's, that's what it reminds me of. It's a classy mod. I mean, it's it's an elegant looking mod, really classy. It has a really nice screen on it. I like the screen on it. The screen could have some more information on it, like the amps, that's not here. And it could probably tell me how many volts my battery's working at, because the screen is really big. It could have more information. I would like that a lot. Um, another con that I'll give to it is that it doesn't work with stainless steel and temperature control, but you can work with stainless steel in watts mode, which I usually use it in watts mode anyway. Unless the device does have, it's not a biggie for me, but for some of you guys it probably is. But yeah, if I use any mod in temperature control, I'm only, only going to use it in stainless steel mode. I do not use NI200 wire. And titanium wire, it's not easy to find in Portugal, so I don't use that one at all. Unless the tank came with it, with a pre-built coil with the, with the titanium. Um, everything else, guys, the mod is really nice really really well built the doors the magnets are really strong everything fits into place there's nothing out of place it's really nice nothing rattles on it it's a solid mod and it's been working great i got this on thursday if i'm not mistaken today is tuesday it'll probably be up on wednesday to review but i got this on thursday and i've been working with it since and it's been working great i like the way that it has a, a on and off button instead of using the power because you can control everything from here you don't have to be pressing a whole bunch of buttons it's really easy like i showed you guys so yeah i've been enjoying it let me take a hit off of it it could have had a little bit more power but then again if you have more power you're going to be wasting more battery life on it so 65 watts i guess is great but for the SRDA, it's, it's the, the minimum I can work with it is at 65 watts with the Clapton coils I have built inside of it that I showed you guys yesterday. Um, I'm usually rocking on it around 80 watts, 90 watts, 100 watts. So this one can't handle it. But then again, like I said, if this had 75 watts, I'd be wasting battery life a lot faster. So battery life on this one, um, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Um, I'll probably get about... Rocking it at 65 watts, I can get about two to three hours out of it, which isn't bad for me. And I'm like, like I'm saying, when I say two to three hours, I'm constantly vaping. I always have the mod in my hand. Every single time I have a mod, it's always in my hand. At work or at home, well, not at home, at home I put it on top of the table. But at work, it's always in my hand, and I'm always vaping away, always vaping away. So, yeah, it's not bad for me. Three hours isn't bad at all. Yeah, and that's, that's it, guys. So, that's my review on the Ferrobox 65TC. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, hope to see you all on the next one. And if you guys have any questions, please leave it down in the comments. I'll be glad to answer like you guys know I answer you all the time. Um, maybe not on the hour because I'm not 24 hours on YouTube, but as soon as I get on YouTube, I try to answer everyone before I do anything else. I'll answer questions that people have for me. So that's it, you guys. Stay safe, rock on, vape hard, Viper Vapor PT is out, and hope to see you all on my next review. Stay safe, you guys.